These are the faces of every senior Hamas member killed since the October 7 attacks. Their deaths have significantly impacted Hamas's leadership and operational capabilities as Israel continues targeting key figures in its military campaign. But despite this, the war is far from over. The first and most significant death is Yahya Sinwar, Hamas's leader and an architect of the October 7 attacks. Sinwar was a key military figure and was one of Israel's top targets. This drone footage shows his final moments. Now some of this vision is too graphic to show unedited, but you can see Sinwar in the back there wearing a vest of grenades. Sinwar's death was a pivotal moment. Benjamin Netanyahu deemed it the beginning of the end of the war on Gaza. To the people of Gaza, I have a simple message. This war can end tomorrow. It can end if Hamas lays down its arms and returns our hostages. But since his death, Israel's strikes on Gaza have actually intensified, while Israeli authorities continue to block the delivery of critical aid to Palestinian civilians. At least 93 people are dead, including 25 children, after Israeli strikes in northern Gaza. Breaking news from the Gaza Strip, where the civil defense says a large number of casualties are being reported in an Israeli attack. Tensions remain high in the Middle East following further Israeli strikes on southern Lebanon and the occupied West Bank overnight. Next on the list is Ismail Haniyeh, who is arguably Hamas's most high-profile member until his death in July. Haniyeh managed the terror group's external relations and was described as the public face of the October 7 attacks after this footage showed him appearing to make light of the strikes from his office in Qatar. Haniyeh was one of Hamas's loudest critics of Israel's war on Gaza accusing them of committing barbaric massacres against unarmed civilians. He said Hamas was ready to negotiate a two-state solution if Israel agreed to a ceasefire and to allow for more humanitarian aid to enter Gaza. Haniyeh was assassinated in Tehran in July, a few hours after attending the inauguration of Iran's new president. His death sparked global protests and marked a critical escalation in the war, with Hamas vowing to retaliate and Iran pledging to avenge his death. This is Salah al arori who served as Hamas's deputy leader for more than six years until his assassination in January. Arori was a founder of the organization's military wing and worked as an active recruiter. And like Sinwar and Haniyeh, he played a key role in planning the October 7 attacks. Arori had been on the US terrorist list since 2015, with a $5 million reward for information leading to his capture. He was killed at age 57 in a drone strike while he was in Beirut. Six other Hamas members were killed, including two military commanders. Israel has neither confirmed nor denied responsibility for his death, but described the attack as a surgical strike against the Hamas leadership. Now, the fallout from this attack was highly significant. Lebanon accused Israel of violating its sovereignty, while the attack affected Israel's efforts to secure the release of its hostages being held by Hamas. This is Marwan Issa, deputy commander of Hamas's military wing. Issa was among the most reclusive senior Hamas members. Few people knew what he looked like until this photo of him surfaced in 2011, when he appeared during a reception for released Palestinian prisoners from the Gilad Charlotte Prisoner Exchange. Despite his low public profile, Issa played a crucial role in developing Hamas's military systems and was considered one of Israel's most wanted militants. His home was bombed on two separate occasions and he was seriously wounded after a failed assassination attempt in 2006. Issa played a key role in the October 7 attacks and was added to the EU's terror blacklist last December. A senior IDF officer described him as the strategic mind of Hamas, noting his influence on Sinwar. Issa was killed in an Israeli strike on an underground facility in central Gaza in March. At the time, he was the highest ranking Hamas commander to be killed in the war. Netanyahu described his death as a great achievement for Israel, saying they will all die. This is Ayman Norfal, Hamas's fourth most senior commander, who had served as a leader in the terror group's militant wing for 15 years before his death. He was killed in Israeli airstrikes on the Burej refugee camp in central Gaza, less than two weeks after the October 7 attacks. The mission to take down Norfal exemplifies the lengths Israel's military will go to to destroy Hamas's power base. Israeli journalist Yuval Abraham said the Israeli army authorized airstrikes on Burej refugee camp with the intent of killing Norfal and with the knowledge that it would kill hundreds of civilians who didn't know it was there. Four multi-story apartment buildings were destroyed in the strike. Several months after these strikes, there were still reports of bodies in the rubble that hadn't been identified. 
Just for perspective, in 2021, a top Pentagon official said the US military needed special permission if a planned attack on a high-ranking target would result in 15 casualties. For Osama bin Laden, he said it was up to 30 casualties. For Nofal's death, Israel reportedly authorized the killing of up to 300 Palestinian civilians. This is Jawad Abu Shamala, who is Hamas's Minister of Economy. He was killed in a precision strike by the Israeli Air Force a few days after the October 7 war began. Next is Osama al mazini who is in charge of negotiation affairs. Mazzini became internationally known for overseeing the negotiations around Gilad Shalit, a former MIA soldier of the IDF who was captured by Hamas in 2006 and held captive for five years. Charlotte's abduction sparked global condemnation, with Hamas rejecting requests to allow the Red Cross to visit him or for his family to contact him. Gilad Shalit appeared pale and thin as he returned home in a lopsided prisoner swap between Israel and Hamas. He's the first captive Israeli soldier to be returned home in a generation, and he was held in isolation by Hamas for more than five years. Mazzini was killed in an Israeli airstrike on October 16 last year. This is Taysir Mubasha, who is commander of Hamas's North Khan Yunus Battalion. He'd held numerous senior positions throughout his Hamas tenancy, including heading Hamas's naval forces and managing weapons manufacturing. The IDF claimed Mubasha was behind the deadly 2002 attack on the Atzmona Pre-Military Academy in Gush Katif, as well as the Hamas infiltration into Israel via Zakim Beach in 2014. He was killed in an airstrike in the Gaza Strip last October. This is Fatah Amin Sharif, who served as the commander of Hamas in Lebanon. He was also the chairman of the UNRWA's Teacher Association and principal of a UN-run school in Lebanon, but was suspended for praising the October 7 attack. The IDF accused him of coordinating Hamas activities in Lebanon with elements of Hezbollah and playing a key role in recruitment and the purchasing of weapons. Sharif was killed in Israel's Operation Northern Arrows, which was a series of targeted airstrikes in Lebanon that marked some of the country's deadliest days and decades. His wife and two children were also killed. And lastly, there's Ali Qadi, who was a senior commander in one of Hamas's special forces units. Qadi was involved in planning the October 7 attack. He'd been arrested by Israel in 2005 and was deported to Gaza in 2011 as part of a prisoner swap exchange. Qadi was killed in a drone attack one week after the October 7 attacks began, with the IDF putting out a post saying all Hamas terrorists will meet the same fate. The deaths of these senior figures have dealt a significant blow to Hamas's command structure, weakening its ability to coordinate attacks and maintain control. But despite these losses, new leaders often emerge to fill the void. In the wake of Sinwar's death, Hamas's acting leader Khaled Mashal said the organization had endured the journey of resistance for decades and would remain loyal to its path of martyrs. His words, along with Israel's ongoing assault on Gaza, suggest the war is far from over. 